Not sure about you, but over the last two weeks, I've become a bit frustrated and annoyed. Annoyed at the fact that I can't plan out my year as I usually would. I love planning things in advance. If you uh, could get my phone and go on Google Calendar, you'll see that on my phone, I've got things planned out for most days, weeks, even months. Sometimes kids laugh at me because they say, why do you have something booked two, three months in advance? But because of my role, that's how I have to think. I've got to plan ahead. Yeah, because of the situation we are in, because of this lockdown, it's becoming very frustrating for me. And I think that frustrates me the most is the fact that we don't know when it's going to end. Some people say maybe it's three months, maybe six months, maybe 12 months. We're not sure. And for me, that's really annoying. And I kind of had to come back and uh, remind myself that those things don't matter. And there are three things that I want to share with you this afternoon, just in regards of how we can kind of combat, combat being frustrated and annoyed. So hopefully you can learn something this afternoon and you can practice it and you can share it with others. So these are my three tips for you this afternoon. Number one, trust God. In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your paths straight. I've been in ministry for more than 10 years now and this verse has always come back to help me. Sometimes there are stuff in life where I don't understand. I'm not sure where to go. Or sometimes I feel like, yep, this is it. This is the way I should go. This is the direction I should go. Yet this verse always pops up in my head. It's my favorite verse. And this verse teaches me that it doesn't matter if I'm, 100% 100% sure about a certain way I should go, or if I'm sure, I should always trust God. There have been situations in my life in regards to work, in regards to church, in regards to relationship and friends, where I'm not sure what to do. And I come back to this verse and I, and I think to myself, you know what, I've got to trust God. And in a nutshell, that's what this verse is saying, that we should trust God and not trust ourselves. And in a time like this, that's super important. We may not understand what's happening. I personally don't understand why or how or why is God letting this happen. Yet when I read this verse, it's pleasing to my heart to think, you know what? God's in control. God knows why and how it's happening. So that's number one, trust God. The second tip I have is to stay connected. And this is super, super important. Now, I want to remind you that the person you should stay connected with the most is God. I know that's very cliche. I know sometimes we say, yeah, yeah, we're, we're, I'm connected with God. But maybe that's not true. But at, at this point of time, I want to remind you that it's super important to connect with God. Maybe it's just praying. Maybe it's reading the Bible. Maybe it's singing songs. It doesn't matter what way, but it's so important to connect with Him. Now, you may be saying, well, I've, I've never prayed before. I've, I've never read the Bible. I've never sang a song to him. And that's fine. Maybe this is the opportunity where God's calling you. And you need to say, you know what, God? I'm so sorry. The fact that we are broken, the fact that we are sinful, breaks our relationship with God, disconnects our relationship with God. And maybe what's happening at the moment is reminding us that we need him more than ever. Maybe you are a Christian. Maybe, you know, you've been going to church and youth group and you've accepted him as your Lord and Savior. And that's great. But let me remind you, please, please, please do not stop praying. Do not stop reading the Bible. These things are important. The fact that we can connect with our Heavenly Father is so important and so vital to our relationship to him. We need to connect back with him. We need to pray to him. We need to open up our hearts to him. And he will speak to us through the word of God. In regards to connection, not only God, but also people. Times are tough and it might even get worse. And I want to remind everyone, including myself, that we need to stay connected with family, with friends, and for you guys, with leaders. It's so important that you guys stay connected with people. We are designed and made by God, created by God to interact with one another. Now, because of the situation, we can't physically go to people's houses or go to church, and that's fine. 
But let me remind you and encourage you to connect with your leaders, your family, your friends over Facebook or Instagram, Discord, wherever it is, but connect. It's so important for your mental health. So please remember to connect to the ones next to you. Remember to connect with your loved ones. Remember to connect with your school friends, your leaders. Lastly, I want to remind you or tell you that it's important to love others. Jesus said that the greatest commandment is loving God and loving people. Society says, hey, it's chaos, it's crazy, just think of yourself. Yet God says, no, put others first. I was seeing in the news the other day where uh, a man, I think it was uh, outside of Centrelink, um, uh, not shop, but Centrelink building, uh, he was just giving away money. He was giving away money, people just queued up at Centrelink. I'm not sure if he's a Christian, and it really doesn't matter if he's a Christian or not. But what he was doing is putting others first. Now, I'm not saying that you have to go out and start giving people money. But I am saying to you, I want to challenge you to put others first. In a time where we think, no, no, it's only about me. I should think about myself. I'm saying to you, the Bible is saying to you, put others first. Check in on your family, your friends. Maybe you might uh, walk past a stranger who's in need. Put them first. Now, maybe uh, you're on your couch, you're on your desk, and you're saying, well, I'm homebound. I can't do anything. Well, that's not true. There are a couple of things I thought about that you can do to help others. Maybe it's preparing a meal for your neighbor, your family, your friends. Now, you may be saying, well, I can't cook. Well, great. Don't cook, please. Maybe order Uber Eats. But that's still thinking of others. Maybe it's talking to your neighbor or an elderly person, knowing that they can't go to the shops. And saying, hey, do you want me to pick up your supplies? Do you need anything? Do you need toilet paper? Do you need food? Because it's really important to check in with them. Maybe it's messaging or texting or calling someone and saying, hey, how you doing? But when you call them, don't call them and start talking and talking and talking. What you need to do is call them and shut your mouth. Just listen. Because that's so important now where someone doesn't want to be talked to, they want to listen or they want to be heard. And I know sometimes that's hard for me because I talk so much. And sometimes I, sometimes I have to remind myself, hey, just stop, listen to the person. And let me encourage you, you need to do the same. So these are my challenges for this week. And what I want to challenge you this week to do is do one, at least one of these three things. I would love for you to do all of them, but at least one. So what's it going to be? Are you going to trust God either for the first time or trust God more? Or maybe you you should really stay connected with God and people. And that's what you really need to work on. Or maybe you need to work on loving others. So what are you going to do?